I'm Michaela Smith, and I will be doing the Finger Bowl 5 this week. So the driving question for this Finger Bowl 5 is, what is the gospel? What exactly do Christians mean when they talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Since the word gospel means good news, the question is then, what is this good news and who is it for? The simple answer is that this good news is the narrative of the entire Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, the gospel is one narrative about the Messiah. And this good news is for every human being. You see, the gospel at its core is the action God has taken purely at his initiative to restore the relationship between himself and wayward mankind. The relationship between God and man was eternally broken when the first man and woman disobeyed his commandment to them. For restoration to occur, two seemingly contradictory qualities in God's nature has to be satisfied, his justice and his love. God's justice requires punishment, but his love wants to extend grace. So the solution to this God-sized problem is that God would take his perfect just wrath out on himself and he would exercise his perfect love towards us. And this is the solution that none of us could have ever come up, come up with or predicted or could have ever deserved, that God would perfectly execute both justice and love. The first point is the need for the gospel. Justice required that man's rebellion had to be judged and punished. In keeping with his holy nature, this would require for the destruction of all who have fallen short of his perfection. As such, all men everywhere in every age stood under condemnation. As the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which is Romans 3.23. At the same time, God's love moved him to extend mercy and forgiveness to his wayward children. God's love sought a way to provide mercy and to extend it to those who had rebelled and now lived in death. Secondly, the cost of the gospel. For deliverance to occur, neither mercy nor judgment could be denied. Both were expressions of his holy nature. How could restoration be accomplished given such contra contradictory realities? It was though through the act of Jesus Christ, God's Son, coming into this world and becoming a willing stand-in for humankind, personally taking on the full weight of God's judgment against man's rebellion, that deliverance was accomplished. Having lived life completely in accord with God's will, being without sin, Jesus was able to offer his life as a perfect substitution. Third, the payment of the gospel. To bear such judgment, however, required the suffering and death of Christ. It came at the hands of government of his day. Through innocent of any crime, he was executed by crucifixion and was buried in a tomb. And on the third day of his death, he came forth fully alive, showing himself to the disciples and approximately 500 people who had followed him. On the third... These men and women, who had earlier been confused by his declarations, now told of the stories of what they have seen, heard, and experienced. Their confession was that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He was the Messiah that was foretold in the Old Testament and had now come into the world to bring deliverance that mankind had so needed. Fourth, the response to the gospel. Everyone must respond to the gospel. And for some, it can look like repentance, where they recognize themselves to be sinners separate from God and alienated by their own rebellion. They find justification solely through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, as the Bible declares in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. And then others completely reject the gospel, unknowingly remaining a slave to sin and death. Those are the two decisions that are available for humanity. And because God is loving and all humankind have free will, whether they choose their creator or reject him. And whether you choose him or reject him, it is crucial that you know who you are accepting or rejecting. I implore you not to create your own version of God, because firstly, that is adultery and ultimately worshiping of yourself. And secondly, you are ultimately accepting or rejecting a fictional Jesus with no saving power, and that is very dangerous. The only way to salvation is through the very real Yahweh of the scriptures. To conclude, the Bible says in Romans 14, 12, that everyone shall give an account to himself to God. Not one person is, ex is exempt from this moment, and not one person is left without an excuse. Thank you.